few weeks ago, I started into an easy to do DIY rock crawler transformation for our Polaris Razor RS1. We added protection, put on a serious winch, and all around increased the rugged rock bashing capabilities of the RS1. This week, we continue with the rock crawling theme. In anticipation of a few different parts I'll be putting on, I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the RS1, put it on jack stands, and then go ahead and take off the wheels and tires. This is gonna give us much better visuals for you guys to see what I'm doing. And truth be told, I'm not gonna be reusing these anyways. With the stock tires and wheels out, we have a clear view of the suspension. Big, beefy, and incredibly exposed, both front and rear. The answer to this, skid plates. In the world of skid plates, you have many different options. Aluminum, steel, or the newest Rage UHMW or HMW, which stands for high molecular weight or ultra high molecular weight. Or in simple terms, <laughs> really hard to puncture plastic. The trailing arms on these sports side-by-side -side or single-seater like the RS1 are really exposed and they're in the perfect spot to take a beating. So pretty much this is where I'm gonna start. Factory UTV, Trail Armor, or Ricochet all make different styles and designs, but for me, I'm just looking to cover the actual trailing arm, not the entire underside of the RS1. The Polaris brand guards are simple and easy to install and provide good coverage on three sides of the steel arm. The plate is quarter inch thick, HMW, and one added feature of this material over steel or aluminum is that it actually slides over what it contacts, so you have a better chance of continuing your forward momentum as opposed to aluminum, steel, or the stock unprotected trailing arm. Sure, it looks simple, but simple doesn't mean it ain't right. Continuing on in the same manner, we'll be protecting the lower front A-arm with a similarly designed skid plate that's made out of the same material. Truthfully, all the same attributes go along with these front A-arm guards, but I'd say they're even more important as the A-arms truly are the first line of impact in most situations, and the tube steel nature makes them much more prone to damage than a beefy trailing arm out back. These HMW guards offer a tall front flap that adds protection for the CV boots when sticks and debris try to get in there. Mounting is quick, just like the rears, and these are designed to slide over anything that you come in contact with. So for this next step, I may cause a little bit of a stir. For this crawler build, I didn't go with 32s, I didn't go with 30s, I didn't even go with stock 29s. I chose a 28, and I'll tell you why. I know, I know, we always go bigger with tires, but one thing I notice is folks going huge with tires and not addressing the ability for the engine and driveline to be able to handle them. Going with the Pro Armor Crawler XG 28 inch with an eight ply sidewall and a super sticky rubber compound, not to mention a square setup at 10 inches wide on all four tires, is gonna mean that in low gear, we'll have a huge ability to spin the tires in even the most aggressive conditions. The one inch smaller tire only equates to half an inch less ground clearance, so I'm not concerned. We went with the Pro Armor Halo Beadlock rim in this instance as well. It puts up a 1600 pound load limit per rim and the beadlock is wide and thick to protect the sidewall. While there are a lot of comparable rim designs from ITP and similar companies, this 28 inch tire on the Halo 15 inch rim is a combo that's not as easy to find. And I believe the 15 inch rim not only looks great, but pulls together the black on black scheme with all of our parts. Now the final two pieces to this build, I'm continually raving about and I don't care who makes them. In my opinion, when you're out on the trail, they're must haves. Up first, a roof. Today I'm installing a Polaris brand aluminum roof, but other manufacturers offer plastic as well. I like the aluminum because it's sturdier, it's light, and it integrates a built-in sunshade to the front rolled lip. It's a one-piece design to cover the entire roof section and is sealed all the way around the entire roll cage to keep water out and vibrations eliminated. The 5051 aluminum is strong, and in case you do get yourself in a really bad situation, it'll protect against intrusion to a greater degree than just a basic plastic roof. Working in harmony with the roof is obviously a windshield. Now a full windshield in the fall and early spring can be a really nice setup, but I prefer the one third size. In this case, they call it a half windshield. The unique benefits of the Polaris brand is its lock and ride. It's self-seating and it features a significant forward facing lip on the top portion of the poly that's designed to grab junk flying at you. I like the short shield for this build as I don't wanna have any reflections or issues sighting forward lines when crawling. And should I need to remove it at any time, it's small enough that I can tuck it away behind the seat or strap it on out back. I've put a lot of accessories and upgrades on the RS1, but all of them are functional and important in their own unique way. Stay tuned to a future episode where I'll finish up the build and then I'm gonna go out and hit the rocks and see if I've accomplished what I set out to do. It only takes two clicks to like and subscribe to our page where you can check out a huge variety of ATV and side-by-side -side videos just like the one you watched.